So Sandman got a buff, going from a 4-1 to a 5-5. Five, five. But the question is, was it enough of a buff? I did not mean to rhyme, but I do think it was enough of a buff. We've got some early data rolling in on various Sandman Electro ramp decks that all look a lot like this. They often have about 9 to 10 cards in common and they look solid they're not going to be the best decks in marvel snap i think there are still a few things that rank above electro sandman decks like this one but uh i do think this will be a really solid viable ladder climbing sort of deck based on what we've seen so far and the reason it works so well is that sandman here is great at shutting down a lot of those turn six pop-off decks things like death wave they're looking to play multiple cards on turn six you've got sarah decks that are looking to dump a few things on turn six even things like she hulk as a card that's run a ton is really limited by something like sandman so it places itself really well against a lot of the strongest meta decks now, of course, you need a deck to support this Sandman game plan, and this one does that in a couple different ways. Number one, you've got Electro here to help you get Sandman down a turn earlier, so your opponent is even more limited on both turn five and on turn six. But beyond that, and perhaps even more importantly, this deck has a lot of uh, ways to dump power early with things like Ebony Maw or Sunspot, these cards that are really uh, low cost but can get pretty big power totals and then support them later with cards that allow you to either go wide across all locations, like Dr. Doom, for instance, to you know fill in some extra stats on an Ebony Maw lane and surprise your opponents, but also perhaps to manipulate your opponent's plays with things like Arrow or Magneto. So basically, with playing Sandman, you're limiting them to one card per turn, it's going to be difficult for them to contest across multiple locations. And you're playing cards like Dr. Doom and sometimes following that up with even an Odin as well, where you're really able to spread your stats out nicely. And that creates a real friction point for your opponent because they don't know exactly where you're going to go or where your power is going to be, but they don't have a lot of choices. They kind of have to go, I'm committing here. And then you can move them around with arrow. You can dip vision in and out of locations. You can use Magneto to pull cards where they're not supposed to be. And it allows you to net this sort of informational and control advantage over the opponent where they feel really restricted, but you have a lot more options. So you'll see most decks looking a lot like this one. There's a few flex spots in here. You can kind of add in some complimentary packages. I put in this move stuff with Magneto and Arrow and Vision to have a nice thematic connection. I've seen people put in ongoing cards, more strict disruption cards like Leech. Uh, as long as you have the Doctor Doom, Odin, Ebony Maw, Sunspot, Wave, Sandman, Electro package, the rest of the cards can kind of be flexed in and out to your preference, and you're still going to have a lot of the core of this deck. So you'll see slight variations here and there. I don't know exactly which list is going to be number one, but that may change over time too as, as, as decks come in and out of the meta. But that core of this Electro Electro Sandman ramp looks like it's going to be a really solid viable sort of thing as you're going to see uh, in some games I've selected here showing exactly what this deck can do. I felt like I was I felt like I was 500 IQ earlier on the stream and I feel like I'm I'm 22 IQ. I went from infinite IQ to, <laughs> to Mr. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> I started at 20, boy oh boy. High IQ stream indeed. Okay, so Vision uh, Sinister could be really cool if we get out of Vision. Honestly, Sunspot might be one of our bigger plays in Bar Sinister. Just gotta be careful with this guy. Because we're gonna skip potentially turn three and four, so it's already seven. We're gonna get an eight power here. Uh, and then maybe some flexibility later as well. Sandman might limit them to where they can only play one big thing in Bar Sinister. What else would I play here? Magneto's pretty big in Bar Sinister. Arrow's not really worth it. I'm gonna do it, man. I don't care. Let's do it. It sounds fun. Did I stop using variants again for a reason? It's just harder to build the deck, so I'm lazy. If you guys ever ask when I'm on stream, I'll do it. I'll, I'll switch. I don't care. I just built the decks off stream and didn't feel like swapping in variants. I actually have quite a few variants for this particular uh, set of cards. Wow, bonus super flow roll. Actually pretty cool. Um, do we want an Ebony Maw? There, there is a... Uh, nah, we're good. Rhino, okay. 
Rhino, you don't see much out of Cerebro 3, I feel like, but that's a lizard, so that's not Cerebro 3. Um, yeah, we're gonna Sandman anyway, right? <sighs> Does mean I lose a little bit of Sunspot scaling. But I get to draw a card. We care about drawing a card. Are we gonna try to win this with Magneto? Magneto pulls Rhino. I could just play like a Doom next turn too if I want with this and screw, screw the Sandman. I don't know, we might want a Sandman though depending on what we see from them and how many cards we think they're likely to play. Omega Red. Oh, I, I don't really care about four slash eight power there, do I? <laughs> that seems meaningless to me. I, I, I don't know. Is that meaningless? Uh, can they beat Sunspot and win the Omega Red, I guess? Oh, interesting. Suddenly a little, a, suddenly a little more intrigued by the Omega Red. Uh, we can pull Omega Red over with Magneto, right? So uh, maybe it's okay. Uh, we don't think they'll be up by 10 here, right? If we rip the Omega Red, should be fine, man. They can only play one card, so they're not gonna play enough that uh, we, we can't pull stuff over. Um, this, this is Magento's moment. Yeah, interesting. A Spectrum would still screw me, wouldn't it? Uh, they'd have eight. Uh, that would be very big. I mean, are they really playing a Spectrum? I guess it's not insane, but I, I'm expecting like an Onslaught. I mean, Spectrum's not crazy, though. Whatever, let's make him have it. I don't know. Onslaught. Yeah, nice. Okay. Beautiful. The steel, baby. We probably could have gone for eight there, too. He seemed very confident. <laughs> you can just kind of feel the confidence, right? He seemed very confident. Happy to see a location spotlight that doesn't ruin the game for two days. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, locations been getting a lot of heat lately. I feel it. I, I get it. I know why people feel that way, too. Uh, this is a little early for the Ebony Mall, right? Playing it on two is technically sort of kind of maybe better because we can go for the Electro. We do want Electro to go left, though. How long can I keep this Ebony Mall in play on Warrior Falls? Now, nah, let's just put it mid and then Electro, uh, Electro plus whatever can go left and just wipe those out. That's fine. I think we're generally pretty okay to play Mall on one. Minstrel's Lab, definitely going to reward that rather nicely as well. Yeah, I like, as you put it, a benign uh, featured location, yeah. I, I think the ones that kind of limit the game space or uh, discourage decks, like, re feel really limiting and constricted are worse. Certainly prefer the ones that are... Uh, I really want to play Sandman, right? Do I want to put him here to wipe? Well, if, I, if the Electro doesn't matter if I'm playing Sam in anyway. Why, why am I worried, bro? <laughs> what's, what's the problem, Reed? It's fine. Yeah, I promise you can play the same man. It's all good. Dark Hawk, okay. Um, Dark Hawk does get pulled by Magneto and will theoretically be smaller. This does give up any sort of the Odin plan, but we know we're getting Chavez anyway next turn, so there is no real Odin plan anyway. Um, do we think, like, the Korg and the Electro die here, and then theoretically... Oh no, Kingpin's gonna die next, because we're gonna pull Kingpin as well. Maybe that's okay though, right? To just wipe out power elsewhere so that we can set up for the Doctor Doom to win uh, the final turn. I think that's okay. Oh, um, okay, that's actually still fine. All their power is isolated here. So we should be fine with a Doctor Doom play, right? Well, actually, Doctor Doom... Kind of a little riskier, isn't it? 
Because if they choose to beat either spot with one big play, <sighs> we kind of just lose. We could instead pick our poison uh, with like a Chavez. The problem is there, they can just, they, they know they can beat Ebony Maw, right? So let's play Dr. Doom because they might think they're safe to beat Ebony Maw with a fairly small play. And then the 10 power difference total, 12 to two, might actually net us the victory here. Uh, also, we're gonna have 17 left and they're gonna lose a kingpin. That's 21. If the devil dino goes down It's 19 so we would lose left with dr. Doom We could actually theoretically just win left with a Chavez right because kingpin goes away. That's 21 This is 21, but then dinosaur often not always but often Gets small enough that we just win here, right? They play arrow here though, Kingpin murders that, but then they just lose the other two spots. So they, they can't play arrow left. That makes no sense, right? You just lose. Victory. Oh, okay, I just didn't have it. <laughs> we, did, we did a lot of calculating here. This wins though, right? This always wins. The, the, the way this doesn't win is if they play a card that adds a card to hand, right? Uh, if the Devil Dino basically stays the same size, this loses. Actually, it still ties. Even that ties. Kingpin dies. They go to 21. We go to 21. They'd have to win. And, and it would have to be a card that adds a card to hand. So it'd have to add a card to hand and be a tiebreaker victory, which I don't, I don't think happens. A rock slide would also help because that would be another way to buff the Dark Hawk in that lane. All right. Math is, yeah, math is hard. <laughs> Let's go for the easy, easy percentages, right? The better with the theory than the math, for sure. All right, so we got Electro, we got Wave Odin Doom. Uh, this is actually pretty nuts. We can go uh, Wave. I don't know the best, I haven't played this deck enough yet to really know if I should go like Wave Doom and save the Odin for later, or if I should actually go um, Wave Odin on the wave to to limit my opponent that feels wrong though i gotta say i don't i don't think that's right that feels wrong we don't want that because we want to be able to play this elsewhere honestly we don't care about rocks right we kind of know what we're doing we kind of have a la line here we'll play we'll play vision on five so so doom on four vision on five odin on six right that's really nice the vision gives us the flexibility to contest where we need it and uh the doom just gives us a lot of total power output with, with odin I wonder if arguably could have put the wave uh, left, like you have space for it. So the Odin is more directly contesting the sunspot, but yeah, whatever. Should be fine. Is Null worth your tokens? I don't really think so. It's, it's good in Galactus decks, I think. It's okay, but there's some without it too. Uh, but that, that if you have Galactus, you know, it's fine probably, but uh, is the overlay something you made yourself? It is, yeah. Is it available for other streamers? I mean, yeah, <laughs> other people can recreate it, yes. Uh, whether or not that's easy to achieve is perhaps a, a, a different question. Um, it, basically, you just got to mask all the stuff out and build a bunch of different layers. And But yeah, if you're comfortable with OBS, I mean, I, I certainly can't stop you or wouldn't try to. Um, a couple of people have already asked me for tips on how to recreate it. I can't really tell them much other than just this is how you do it. I can't be too helpful, but um, there's there's no like template I can like package up and send to you or whatever. You just kind of have to do it, um, which I guess that makes it a little harder. Uh, is Odin here a victory? I'm too lazy to count so far. Almost certainly, right? Riding 12 here. Well, even more. 16 here um adding another eight here up 16 uh arnim zola is not going to be the play taskmaster already played what are we looking at here Did they, they didn't skip five so no she hulk 16 ever coming down here 
arrow left is actually a problem yeah well is arrow left a problem no because this is still uh gonna go to 16 for the tie um do we win a tie no we probably don't want a tie actually do we maybe oh we can't we can't win arrow anyway though i don't know i'm running out of time i got distracted talking about the stupid layout uh, does arrow left beat us? Yeah, probably wins the tie, right? He's only have eight here. They're gonna win by more than eight of the arrow. They're gonna be at uh, uh, 27 and we're only gonna be at uh, 15. No arrow though, hazmat instead. Okay, that actually could also make life a little hard with the vision over there. No, we're fine. We're getting the five, seven actually. Yeah. Was there a play to beat arrow that also wins a non-arrow play? Like, uh, Magneto doesn't disrupt. Victory. Trying to think if there was any actual good line there that beats an arrow. My arrow doesn't work because theirs goes off first. Chavez not big enough to win a tie. No, I think we just play for the non-arrow if we're sticking it out, which we did. People are putting arrow in decks that have no... Just because, you know, it's just such a good... It's just such a good way to win. I can't believe it didn't get nerfed. And what's crazy is it's been this way for a while. It's not like it's a brand new change that Arrow is suddenly good. It's not like that's just developed. We thought she was gonna get nerfed in like December and she hasn't been nerfed. I, I just, I'm shocked. I'm just shocked that Arrow has not been impacted yet. It, it boggles the mind. And, and, and what happens is, you know, we're all forced to run it, of course. <laughs> It feels like every deck, if it's not got some way to play towards an arrow, just forget it. What's what? Why are you bothering, right? What's what's your plan? Uh, I think Electro is still better in this deck than a Maw, right? I have not played this enough to really say that with confidence yet, but uh, we've got Sunspot to fill gaps right now. Anyway, we should be fine. It's it's kind of true at the moment that I don't really have anything to electro towards. I mean, I, I I can hit a Sandman and a Vision that would feel good. Arrow probably doesn't feel great yet for that for that purpose. But but anyway, just bigger Sunspot scaling feels nice. Ah, okay. So are they Ramp or are they Galactus? The most important question of all. Uh, if they're Galactus, holding an arrow certainly makes some sense because uh, we could steal it. They're only on uh, five right now, not ready for Galactus just yet. Let's see. Oh, that sure makes me think Galactus, guys. I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't know about you, man. They, 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 they. This, this victory screen is so trippy every time. I'm never ready for it. I think the game bugs out every time. Like the timing is so off, but without arrow, there won't be a counter for a lot of decks. <laughs> Don't you counter decks by being a good deck? I, I, <laughs> I, I haven't really thought this argument through a lot. So forgive me if this sort of meanders a little bit or it's not particularly coherent. You know, it's like saying in a race, you know, let's say you're in a car, a, a NASCAR race or, or whatever, right? There's two ways to win, right? You can win by driving f the fastest and everybody tries to drive the fastest or the argument is, well, I need a way to counter that car. So I need a rocket launcher to blow up the other cars. I, I think it's important for tech cards to exist, but when the when the tech card or the, the, the card becomes, and I wouldn't say Arrow is really a tech card, but when the card becomes so pervasive that everybody is playing the card, everybody's driving the same car I, I think it just becomes a less interesting game right i i yeah jeff i i've kind of made this argument a lot i think i have the most fun in marvel snap when everybody's trying to be as big as possible and not trying to lower the opponent's power i know there's a balance i i, I don't think we don't need tech cards right but i think the game is most fun for me when when we're all trying to get really big did anybody else's stream stop? That's that's the whine. The the, the <laughs> when I whine too much, the stream just ends. Um, Reed just wants to nerf NASCAR. I've never watched a NASCAR race in my life, for the record. <laughs> Let's be clear, <laughs> never once. But 
Um, I, I, I have the most fun, you know. It, it, now, it's it's also fun to answer your opponent's thing and do a big, awesome, you know, hitting the, the, the clutch Shang-Chi and stuff is, is awesome. That feels good, too. But I do think that probably has to come with some degree of, of give and take, some kind of risk-reward. And currently, it doesn't really feel like Arrow is much of a risk-reward to me because it feels like it's always the right card and always the right play. So is there really any notable downside to it, right? So you could lower the power to increase the risk because it's like, oh, I'm, I'm just too small. You could increase the cost to increase the risk. Um, you, you, could, you could limit the number of cards to lower the reward. I guess power is also kind of reward, but you get the argument, I think. Um, do we need to worry about Shuri's Lab just winning via Nexus? We can do some arrow stuff. We've got Magneto's pretty cool. Shang-Chi. Okay, we can pull him over if we want. Let's gain a nine power per position advantage there. We could arrow the final turn here too to pull them away from Nexus and just try to outscale, but you kind of worry because they have a big lead left now and it looks like they're about to have a big lead mid. Also, vision is insane. Dude, Vision's nuts. Uh, dude, Vision's gross. I, I can't beat Vision, right? That's so nutty here. I, I think we're done. That's crazy good. There, there might technically be some ways, but it'd be pretty hard since they're ahead left anyway. Like, we, we need a pretty big margin of victory on Nexus, and I don't think we're going to have it. Um, did you consider Shang-Chi for this deck? I, I haven't really seen that many Shang-Chi's in the like Electro Ramp stuff. I just took a look at a variety of Electro Ramp decks and kind of put a couple movement themed cards in, you know, basically Magneto Vision Arrow and said, hey, it's a movement. <laughs> a little hand wave and it has a theme, right? Um, I, I think it'd probably be okay. Yeah, I, I think the risk is if you're if you're running things that are fairly low cost, you're only ever getting one card per turn, ideally, or a lot of the time anyway, with, with Sandman. So is Shang-Chi swingy enough, or is he offering enough per power card, power per card output, basically, to, to warrant his slot? And there are definitely matchups where he does, right? If he kills a, a, a Red Skull, he's an 18 power card, effectively, right? But he's kind of competing against Doctor Doom, 15 power. Odin potentially you know 23 power if he's copying dr doom magneto 12 uh vision and arrow are smaller but they're also higher utility right they have a ton of flexibility so is he outpacing his his peers in this deck often enough to be worth the slot maybe it depends on the meta probably if you're seeing a ton of, of shuri red skull decks he probably is yeah if you're seeing smaller decks or things where there aren't as many Shang-Chi targets, probably not. Okay. Interesting, all right. Yeah, we love Iceman. Do we have any cool Artem Zola plays? Uh, we, we talked about running Zola in this deck potentially, so like Zola Doom could be kind of fun to stack a bunch of Dooms. Um, that is one of those things where, you know, five power per positions not exactly super high especially if i if i used magic to achieve that right so you're talking about a, a fairly limited line something like gamora artem zola's darn near as good uh so we could go here we go magic here save the doom for here and then Zola here, there's two spots here, left, two spots here. So Doom plus his dude, Doom plus his dude. They're each, yeah, they're each making a dude for the other one. And then two dudes here for 10. I mean, yeah, in, in theory, in theory, that's okay. We may pivot if we think it makes more sense. Ah, okay, we pivot. <laughs> that's, that's not it, I can assure you. That's not the play. So maybe it's maybe it's Doom Zola instead in this case. Uh, if we want to go for magic right and then Doom on six, uh, not Zola, Odin I mean on seven. 
That's fine too, probably. That adds 10 here, might surprise them. Uh, cable rock slide is from Triskelion, and that's from Triskelion. So, cable's really the only thing we actually know about so far, which probably makes me think we're looking at a uh, Devil Dino deck. We might have trouble outscaling a Devil Dino deck uh, just because they get so big per. position shoot you absolute jerk uh, I mean is doom still my best play just get 10 power here and uh, 13 power here sure doesn't feel very good really wanted to snipe that back so that's that's 10 and and 13 is a 23 power line. You know, so, so, like these two could, this all could be bigger. I don't know. I think it's enough, but can't wait for Jeff the baby shark to come. I, I saw that, man. I I, I, I I don't know why, but I'm anti Jeff. <laughs> I'll say it. I'm anti Jeff. I'm adding nine power mid. They just add more power mid, right? They don't really care about winning right in, in fact we're, we're probably better off just doing this and trying to outscale them we're down by six though so is adding 13 ever really enough that's only a seven point difference um what are the odds they only put seven power there pretty slim right it would be nice if we could gamora but cosmos in the way yeah i think this is a loss always but eh. oh shoot Oh, oh, maybe, 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 maybe. Let's go. That is a really low final power turn, I would argue. I mean, I guess not, it's 12, but the risk that they had and, and the one that, that unfolded is that the, the most common location for a buff was one that they had already secured. Uh, Monster Island, sure, sure. Sunspot Scorpion's a good little line. Um, so really the goal here is hit Electro or Wave, get a Sandman down early. Well, if you hit Wave, you don't have to play Sandman. You can just go like Doctor Doom, Odin stuff, but getting some kind of ramp into some kind of big cheat card is, is really the plan. Lockjaw, interesting. Okay, we don't want to lock up too many spaces per position because we might want to double Doctor Doom at some stage, leaving two spots open left could be a, a meaningful distinction here. Probably rather pass than play Lockjaw for the same reason, actually. Ooh, we could go Ebony Maw. We don't currently have Electro or Wave, so double Doctor Doom does not look likely. And in fact, I don't know that I'd play either of those on four. We could go Ebony Maw mid in that case and just set up for the good arrow slash vision slash Dr. Doom plays. We might still play an Electro, but that's one of the reason Ebony Maw is okay in this deck, right? Is you have the ability to play around him with visions and dooms and so on. Oh, you guys are looking at the wrong screen. Screw me. Uh, let's pass here. Sandman's less good for me than just Sunspot Power, I think. Or excuse me, uh, Lockjaw's less good. I'm really good at streaming, guys. I definitely always have the right screens up. I saw Hooglin started using my layout more or less. He, he sent me a tweet or a DM a while ago asking about it. It's all on a video. It looked like he is converted to my, uh, my layout more or less, which I'm happy this layout seems to be uh, popular. People seem to like it. I mean, Sandman Doctor Doom looks really good here, right? Sandman's gonna lock down this bishop. Probably should snap here, honestly, going into the Sandman, I would say. Ooh, interesting. Dr. Doom does actually still tie there. But if they win right... Uh, Magneto is a little weird. Could pull the bishop, but then you're kind of in trouble. I, this, this got weird all of a sudden, right? Because I'm behind five and five. Um... 
We don't think they can contest both, though. So the question is, do I win a tie? They're going to win one of these spots, right? Um, Taskmaster's adding 14 power, potentially. Uh, we're ahead by... Uh, we're going to be ahead uh, 13 to 26. That's 13. So Taskmaster would actually win a tiebreaker. If we go for Dr. Doom... I think we actually lose this. I just want to see it happen. I, I think we lose though, right? I don't know what the play is. Mm. That is also the same difference. Oh, but it, uh... Oh my god, yeah, that's actually even better. Yeah, because it positions the power where we don't have it. The random bishop clutching the game by one point here, man. Ah, Zola's good there, yeah. So we wouldn't end up winning with a with a Magneto or a, just a bigger play here. I didn't think about Zola much, which is weird. I played that deck literally all season. Didn't think about playing around Zola though. 